Business. Yes, our regulations are in place. And, you know, it is always important to have regulations in place. Otherwise, these entities will operate um, without regulations. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with technology, uh, it's even more difficult. Mm -hmm. Now, FTX, or FTX is a <coughs> parent company, is actually domicile in Antigua. We have what? FTX, parent company. Parent company. Parent company. Domicile. Our holding company is domicile in Antigua. This is Antigua so FTX Newsroom. was to operate out of Antigua. Mm -hmm. What had happened when they made their application in 2021, the regulators here took the decision that they didn't quite understand the business model. And apparently it was a one-man operation, mm -hmm. so they never proceed to license it. In fact, they asked for uh, greater particulars, mm -hmm. and the particulars were slow in coming. In fact, the application remains on the review. But after what has happened, clearly, the regulators are unlikely to proceed now unless they go into some form of administration and um, they're able to recover. So I have to say that um, our regulators here would have exercised um, prudence and did not rush to register them. I can tell you that in February of this year, I had a meeting with um, the same bank man, Fried, This is Antigua Newsroom was um, reputed to um, uh, worth 33 billion US dollars at the time. Mm. And, um, you know, he was complaining um, that the Antiguan regulators had not approved um, his license here. And he said that is the primary reason why he moved um, his operations, or established rather his operations in the, in, in the Bahamas. But you know me, I mean, I don't interfere, interfere in regulatory business. So even though the issue is raised with me. I mean, I did say to the chairman of the FSRC that he had raised a concern, but that is as far as um, I went. And um, I can say to you that there has not been any regulatory um, breaches, and that is why Antigua has not featured in any significant way, even though the parent company is here. Hmm. Now, I noticed, though, that one of the directors of FTX Antigua uh, was, because he resigned now, um, uh, Arthur Thomas, Ambassador Arthur Thomas. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that um, I would have read a couple of articles in which um, there are some media entities that are trying to make um, the case that he was a regulator and also director of FTX. Mm -hmm. This is well, and that is not quite sure. correct. I mean, yes, he is the chairman of the Eastern Caribbean um, Stock Exchange. But he's not the chairman of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank or chairman of the FSRC. Mm. That is uh, responsible for the supervision of entities like FTX. Mm. So in other words, there's no conflict there. Uh, but again, because um, you know he's a regulator for a stock exchange, or chairman, for that matter, of a stock exchange, because he doesn't really do the regulatory work, but chairman of the um, stock exchange, which regulates um, securities. They're trying to make a link. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say that, you know, if I was him, I would not have, um, you know, served as the director of any company, be it um, you had a rest, um, within the crypto space. And I hope that this is a lesson for him going forward, and he would decline those requests. Mm -hmm. And imagine the approach him from the standpoint that, he has a significant amount of um, experience and expertise. But um, from the standpoint of risk, you know, he may want to, in the future, decline such, um, you know, such requests. Mm. You know, he also served as chairman of um, Caribbean Union Bank for a brief period until last week um, after this um, FTX thing um, broke. He resigned. Mm. So if there was, if there was any um, conflict then evidently the central bank would not have um, sanctioned um, you know, his directorship mm. and Caribbean Union Bank. So I think they are somewhat um, confusing the issues, although I can accept that in hindsight that perhaps as the chairman of the ECSC that he should not have taken such a position. Mm. But there is no evidence that he was involved integrally in the company. In fact, the parent company was not involved in any trades here. The parent company had no bank accounts. So all of the activities <coughs> seem to have taken place outside of Antigua and Barbuda. 
but we cannot escape the fact that the parent company is registered here. So, you know, the FSRC, they are currently um, doing their research, um, their deep dive now to determine, you know, what is the locus of um, regulators here, if they have any, uh, whether or not um, there's any need for any intervention, perhaps maybe to possibly appoint an administrator in the first instance um, for the local entity. Uh, those issues that have been um, reviewed at this time, and obviously they will have to um, coordinate their efforts with um, the other regulators globally. In fact, FTX has a maze of different companies registered all around the world. In fact, it is an entity that literally blew up overnight. I mean, it first crossed my attention. This is Antigua uh, News. Earlier this year, I think it was January. I was somewhere in the um, Middle East and they sponsored a, a function. I noticed to um, going to the Miami airport, I saw FTX and I was trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. I didn't know that the company was registered in Antigua. So, you know, I made inquiries and then subsequently traveled to the Bahamas um, in February of this year. I met with um, Bankman Freed. In fact, um, I spoke to him up to yesterday. So I asked him what's going on because, um, again, as I said, the complexity of this issue in terms of the amount of companies and so on that um, he would have incorporated. Um, regulators going to have some time, some uh, a tough time, uh, literally unraveling this thing in terms of getting to, and I presume they're going to need his cooperation. Hmm. Uh, so, but he seemed to think that the company is salvageable. Uh, as you recognize, there are many articles in the public domain which they said that he did not even have um, proper um, governance systems in place. And, um, and there are some who argue that there may have been some level of fraud as well. So we wait until when we get um, further particulars. But our regulators are prepared to cooperate with them. Um, licenses were, were, um, were granted. But I want to reiterate that they had no trading license to do any business in Antigua. That license was never granted, though an application was made. Mm -hmm. And that is because, um, you know, the regulators here was just trying to figure out what is what is going on. Now, the other thing we have said to the regulators here, which is not really written in the law, but we said to them, because the space is such a risky space, we've asked them to, you know, be very, very cautious in licensing entities that do not have a significant amount of assets here. Mm. Because you always have to look at the worst case scenario. I mean, if um, there's liquidation, that at least you have some um, assets that you can recover. The other thing I believe that um, the regulators here will have to determine is determining to determine which company has the FTX wallet. That's a crypto wallet. Mm. My understanding now is that the keys were given to US um, law enforcement so they're the ones who are currently controlling the assets, but I'm not sure if the United States has the legal locus in the sense that the headquarters in Antigua, and it would suggest to me that based on the structure that is established, that um, you know the local uh, regulators may have some le of a legal locus and perhaps mm. even more locus than the Bahamas and the U.S. And I'm not saying this from the standpoint um, of having any acrimonious uh, relationship with um, the other regulators, but for perhaps Antigua and Barbuda, based on the legal structure, to take the lead on this and to work with other regulators to, if not salvage a company, if it's possible, to at least protect creditors this is and to Antigua Newsroom. maximize um, the amounts um, that are due to creditors. So, again, I'm relieved that at least, you know, that there are no active... Um, trading there was no active trading taking place and um you know unfortunately you know what had told it to be quite an impressive um business has actually gone up in smoke and um it could have been in antigua and i'm not faulting the bahamas because it's a difficult space to regulate um there's some opportunities of course and um, practically all countries would have put would have put um a regulatory regime in place. Now, if you don't have the regulatory uh, regime in place, you still can't stop them from operating. I don't know if you recognize that. Yes. So even licensing them does not make a jurisdiction culpable in the sense that even if you don't license them, then you can't control what they do. Hmm. But at least, given the license, you can have some form of arm regulations. And that's why we had moved quickly to establish our um, Virtual Business Asset Act 
and uh, we're one of the few countries in the Caribbean that um, has the legal framework in place. And I suspect too that it is because we had taken no time to put that legal framework in place to why you know license could not have been granted in the first instance and they were rushing to establish business and instead of setting up shop here and operating out of Antigua, they went to the Bahamas. So it may have spared us um, some embarrassment. <coughs> mm -hmm. I saw it as a missed opportunity initially, but in hindsight, you know, and again, thank you to the regulators for not rushing to give any license here. And they were trying to understand the business. I mean, I don't know you can fault anyone in the sense that the promotion was so good. I mean, it's like this um, youngster, and he's a U.S. citizen, yeah? He's U.S. or Canadian, uh, not American. I think he's a U.S. citizen. Hmm. Now, this guy literally became a multi-billionaire overnight. Then he used to make some outlandish statements of, you know, he's going to give away all his wealth. I don't remember one point, um, I think we have even played um, a video of him here. Yes. So he can give you all his wealth. I think in the Bahamas, um, there's one charity that got 10 million US dollars from him in the form of a grant. So you can imagine, I was a little concerned at what point hey, you have this, um, this um, wealthy billionaire <coughs> doing all this in the Bahamas and your headquarters is here, you're not doing anything here. Mm -hmm. uh, but his issue was that he couldn't get a license here.